Hey everyone, Andrew Hess here. Today, we're gonna to use the Microsoft 365 assessment tool to generate CSV and a Power BI report for us. So now we can notify our users that their SharePoint alerts are going to be retired, and we recommend that they be replaced with a rule or a Power Automate workflow. Now first up, SharePoint alerts are retiring. So so we can see this timeline right here, July 2025, the creation of new SharePoint alerts will be gradually turned off, that's now. From October 25, the expiration feature will gradually be activated. Once activated, SharePoint alerts have a validity of 30 days, starting from its first run, then they will start to expire. January 2026, the creation of new SharePoint alerts will be gradually turned off across all tenants. I believe there's gonna be extensions and you can kind of see that right here. Uh, Microsoft will remove the ability to use SharePoint alerts. Existing SharePoint alerts cannot be extended anymore. So there's gonna be extensions, but right now we have about a year to plan, move, switch over to rules and power automate flows. So today I wanted to show you how to identify them, how to find them. If you scroll down in the documentation down here, you'll see right here, there is a Microsoft 365 assessment tool. So today I wanted to show you step-by-step -step how to use the Microsoft 365 assessment tool. But before we go there, let's go to a SharePoint site. So we're going to a SharePoint site. It's just a, a SharePoint site that I have on my demo tenant. So we have a nice SharePoint site here. What I'm gonna do to view all the alerts is I'm gonna go up here to the gear icon I'm gonna to go to site information, view all site settings, and in here we can see user alerts if you are a site admin. So if you are a site admin under site administration, you will see user alerts. And in user alerts, you can visualize them one by one, all the people that have alerts on this site collection. So you can see these people here have alerts and you can click on them one by one and you can see who have alerts on this SharePoint site. Now that would be very cumbersome to walk through and look through every alert. And today I wanted to use that Microsoft 365 assessment tool. So I'm gonna click on the Microsoft 365 assessment tool here and it's gonna open up and what we need to do is we need to download it. Download it, so let's find getting started. Download the tool, so that's what you're gonna do is you're gonna download the tool. And for me, there's different ones for Windows, Mac OS, Linux. I'm gonna use the one that is for Windows. I'm using Windows 11. So here on the GitHub page, I'm gonna open up the Windows version. I'm gonna click on Assets, and I'm gonna download the Microsoft 365 assessment.exe. Now, once you download that, you wanna make a folder for it somewhere on your C drive or somewhere on your hard drive. When you start using the tool, the outputs are gonna be saved in that folder. So, so I'm gonna create a new folder in my C drive and that's where I'm gonna store it. So I'm storing it in a new folder and here is my Microsoft 365 assessment tool. And it looks like this, it looks like command line, but you know what? You actually can't use it right away. In order to use it, you have to go to Intra and give it permission to your entire tenant. So today we're gonna to do that. We're gonna to go to Intra and we're gonna give it permission. And there's a lot of steps in there. So let's kind of look at the documentation. I'm gonna to go to alerts. I'm gonna look at run an assessment. And this is the documentation I'm going to use to run an assessment. The instructions that I'm gonna to follow today that, that you can follow me on to is an authentication creating an intra application using the intra portal. That's how we're gonna do it today. We can see all this information in here. We're gonna, so we're gonna do a new registration. We're gonna set up the name. We're gonna do public, uh, client, native, mobile, and desktop. Oh, so we do need a redirect URI. So we need to put in local host as the redirect URI. We're going to register it. We're going to choose our API permissions and then we're going to grant access. So. It also says under authentication, you must set allow public client flows to yes. When you set up your application, you need API permissions and you need to grant access. And then it says we're gonna use a certificate. 
So the instructions you see right here, these are the instructions we're gonna to do today. All right, so I'm gonna look more into the documentation here. Permissions required. SharePoint alerts deprecation. So when we set up our intro, we're gonna to want to set this up application here, and these are the minimal requirements and delegated also. So let's jump over to intro and start creating this. All right, so I am in my intro admin center, and today we're gonna to go from app registrations. So I'm in app registrations. I'm gonna do a new registration, and we are going to name it, let's, and this is up to you, SharePoint, alert retirement assessment. Now I did say this should be single tenant. Now the redirect URI, we are going to do public client native. So let's look at that, that information again. So you can see right here in number four, public client native mobile desktop, enter local host as the redirect URI. So we're gonna do that exactly right here. Local host, public cl client native, I'm going to click register. All right, so we've registered that. There's all this information in here. I'm going to hide my IDs and everything in here. But what's important is you may want to get a notepad. I, I like to use notepad. That's just something I do. Notepad, what you want to grab out of here. So you want your client ID. You can copy that and put it on your notepad. And you also want tenant ID. Now these are not my real client ID or tenant ID. I kind of just mixed everything up, but that's kind of what you're doing. You're gonna take your I, your client ID and your tenant ID, put it in a notepad, store it somewhere. Um, just temporarily, just while we're developing this. It'll come, we'll be using it later. Next, what you wanna do is come over here to API permissions. And this is where we're gonna add permissions based on the documentation we saw before. So if you have two screens, that may be helpful. So here we are, if I click on alerts and then I go to requirements, we then pull up those permissions that we need. Maybe take a screenshot, however you wanna do it. These are the permissions that we want to follow right here. Take a screenshot, put that on another screen for yourself. However you wanna do it, write it down. If you're old school like me, if you wanna write it down. And so I'm gonna do this on two screens right now. So first up is we're gonna do the graph and we are going to do application permissions. And this one is looking for sites. So I normally just scroll down and click on each one. Sites, let's see here, sites. And we're gonna do read.all, add permission. All right, and then the other one, we're gonna add permission. This is graph again. This time we're doing delegated. And there's two permissions we need. We need sites, let's find that again. Sites.read.all, uh, so sites.read.all. Then we want user, user, and I think this one may have already been selected. User.read, okay, we have that one too. All right, so, so far down here, let's make sure I'm not in the way. I am in the way. So, so far down here, we have delegated uh, sites.read.all, application, and user.read. Now we're gonna do the SharePoint side. So I'm going to add permission, find SharePoint, SharePoint, and let's start with application. And we are going to do sites.fullcontrol all. And the other one is SharePoint. All sites. Delegated, delegated. All sites.fullcontrol. Now, be very careful with this. You probably want these credentials to expire after a little while, right? Maybe when we set up our, our next piece, make sure that expires. We don't want this to last forever. There is security risk opening this up, but we're going to do this temporarily. And the next thing you wanna do is make sure you have an admin to consent and grant, admin, um, grant consent for each of your permissions. All right, so now that everything's green down here, you see how we have a bunch of green check boxes? That looks good, that's what we want. Next, we're gonna go to certificates and secrets. A lot of times I do secrets, a lot of times with um, AI, I do a lot of secrets, but today we're gonna do something different and it's a certificate. And this certificate, we're going to expire after some time. 
So now we're gonna go to PowerShell. I opened up PowerShell as administrator. So I search for PowerShell, right click to run as administrator. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a simple command, cert, and I'll zoom in here. I'll make sure to zoom in here. The M365 assessment tool, uh, it kind of has some information in there. Let's make that wider. And then cert thumbprint. So I'll put this in the description of the video if you need it. I'm gonna press enter and this is gonna give me a certificate. Now, I am going to delete this. I am not gonna share this. Now that I've generated that cert, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export certificate, the cert file, and I'm gonna put it in my folder here. So my folder where we have the M365 assessment, that's where I'm going to export it. And it's going to create a file here, my app.cert. And so now I'm gonna go back to intra and I'm going to upload that cert. We're gonna find that folder and we are going to upload that certification. Description, cert for SharePoint alert assessment. We're gonna click add. Okay, so we can see the thumbprint down here. It has that number. It has um, when it expires, so it actually lasts a year. This certificate does. Now you may wanna delete this earlier after you run the tool once. You might want to delete the whole entire app registration. You can always reconfigure it. With this video, it's not that hard to reconfigure it. I am going to delete my entire app registration after I run this one time. I don't want people to have read-only, um, full access to my SharePoint tenant. So as soon as I do this video, I'm deleting this app, uh, app registration, okay? So now we have all the permissions set up. Let's go back to our assessment tool. All right, we're back to our assessment tool. Let's look at the um, information again. Maybe we'll reload it again. I kind of like the look of that. So let's let's open the assessment tool again. It looks really cool. I love the way it looks here. You got the, the green arrows. I just think it's pretty uh, futuristic looking. I, I like how they did that. So let's go back to the documentation. And in the documentation, I'm gonna look at their examples. So they had a couple examples here. I am going to use, so this one right here looks right. This one right here looks correct. This is the one that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go back to my notepad. In my notepad, I'm going to put in my client ID. So that's the application ID right here. So let me just make sure I'm getting all this right. So the application ID is right here. Now that's not my real app application ID. I've told you that a thousand times. Tenant ID, that is gonna go, oh, we actually don't need the tenant ID. Mine is actually my SharePoint questions, um, .sharepoint.com, application, we're doing alerts, start. Now the cert path, this is where we're gonna put in our number. If you remember that number, so that's right here. That's where we're gonna put in our number. And now we are going to run this in our assessment tool. For me, I can actually remove this beginning part right here, Microsoft 365. And this is the exact command I'm going to run in the tool. So here's my exact command I'm going to run. Start, mode, alerts, authorization, application, tenant, application ID, cert path, enter. It's connecting. Now it says we can use status to see uh, feedback. So we can type in status. So you can see how it's progressing. Now this is a dev tenant. So I have a small amount of project, uh, a small amount of SharePoint sites compared to probably a production tenant but we can see the progress of it running. If there's any errors, the session start time, you can see it finished. Now use list command to view an overview of the M365 assessment. So now that we have generated the list and we see that it's complete, now we can type in list and we can see the ID. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ID, copy it, and we're gonna say report I dash dash ID and run the report. And when we do that, it's then going to create a Power BI report for us. 
It looks like I need to update Power BI, so let me do that real quick. All right, so now that I have Power BI opened, I'm signed in, let's try running that command again. I'm just gonna press up on the D-pad, run it again. Let's see if it generates that Power BI report for us. It is automatically opening. All right, so it loaded up correctly this time. We can see all the SharePoint alerts. Oh, there's a few in there. Oh, we can see the title, the list. Let's see, can we add people? I want to see the people. So let's see, alerts. I want to see users. User email, that's important to me. There we go. Now I can start to see all the users' emails, where their lists are, the title, the web URL. Now we can target off specific SharePoint alerts to certain people. Now if we want to get further in there, we can go to details. We can see alert frequency. Now I just created a few. This is a demo tenant, but we can see all this information and the scan overview, the count of sites, the total scanned webs, all this information, all this beautiful data. So now you can target your communication to replace SharePoint alerts with rules or Power Automate workflows. A beautiful CSV file, all that data. We could hook this up to Power Automate and have it email people, right? So we have the user emails right here. We could then, you know, do a union and Power Automate, email these people, or we can filter here in Excel, all kinds of options. Now we know who to talk to for our alerts in our entire tenant. I hope this was helpful, and I know this is going to be an issue for a ton of people in the future. Coming up soon, we have a year to handle all your alerts, and now if you want to find it, you have expert level instructions to find everyone in your tenant that you want to email about replacing your alerts. Next week, we'll probably talk about rules and Power Automate and how to replace those alerts with either a rule or a Power Automate flow. So go ahead, like and subscribe. And I'll see you next week.